Okay, this is called Meditation on My Front Stoop. Behind me, the train's whistle blows loudly, people getting to where they need to go, and to, whom, to those whom they love and are loved by. Out here listening, I remember train rides to Manhattan with my father, our arms barely touching as he did the daily crossword in silence, my arms touched by no one now resting against my own head. Under the cool shade of the house's awning, my hands making shadows on the wood, I watch the rituals, other people's lives. A woman is cutting a man's hair on the steps outside the salon, his face squinched up like a crying child's, her back hunched and awkward, elbow crooked over his shoulder as she cuts, the gray curls dropping to the ground. The boy across the alley lights a cigarette on the fire escape, and I remember lying in bed with him. How he told me he saw a plane crash when he was six. How it went down somewhere in Utah. He saw the entire thing from his friend's backyard. Saw it really happen. Body parts hung from trees like flowers belled out over branches. How now he can remember everything without even trying. The pictures roll through his mind like on a dial, all of it, things he can't erase. And as I watch him, I remember games with my father when I was a girl, how he'd lift me up by my arms, swing me over his shoulder like a doll, how he was careful at first, never meant to make it hurt, how it was just play, I bruised you easy, and how when he dropped me once, all I can remember now is my breath leaving my body lying stunned in a pile on the kitchen floor. I remember being scared to leave my bedroom most nights, locking myself in until my father got tired and went to bed. And I remember him walking towards me, his body cut in half by the shadow on the front lawn, arms and legs heavy, weighted down, a moment I give too much to. Now the sun is going down and my mind drifts towards other things. Returning to an empty house with all the lights out, getting into bed alone again, the light breaking through my window, all around me like golden tendrils, like the falling petals of the bodies, the things I give names to, intimacy, dreams, this parting breath. sexier hopefully um, okay uh, it's called with your eyes alone you lick the tip of a cigarette push the tobacco against the sting hold it against your head while he looks for a poem reception for first-year graduate students everyone pretending to be interested pretending to hear what the other is saying holding tightly to plastic cups as they circle the room he's ready to leave but you want to stick around a while inhabit another self for an hour or two, your mouth a gaping hole of hysterics and hands that hurt. Lately, everyone is giving you advice to take it easy, when you could be coming from behind, your hair pulled back, his pierced cock with prince's wand, neck bites, memories of those mornings of early consciousness, Ginsburg's key in the window, letters from his mother urging marriage, clean living, her wishing strongly he was someone else her with the long black beard around the vagina. Instead, you want to know everything, even what doesn't matter. Ox, ox blood colored trousers, black spike heel booties, removable collars in the copy of Vogue, fall issue, the one with Kira Knightley on the cover, hair piece that makes a kind of shield. All things worth knowing, like his hands now, thumb and index making a steeple on his chin. The girl behind you asks, can I have a sip of water? Then aren't you listening? But you're thinking of something else. You forget to answer. Close your eyes for a second to catch your breath. And you know now things will never be easy. You look in a mirror and see mother, brother, wind, shadow, skeleton. You are anything you want, even a little boy. You light the cigarette backwards with the hand shading your face with a face like hers, with his face open, talking.
the side. If I want to read this one, I'm just going to do it. Uh, it's really short. Nah, whatever. Okay. Um, all right. It's called Short Talk and Getting Lost. I just wrote it. Uh, all right. Anyway, stop. Okay. I leave myself enough time to get lost, to find my way back again. The people around me look worried, their faces twisted into snarls, as if sniffing something dead for the first time. They say to find your way, locate the sun, but it's dark here and I don't trust even the best advice. I circle the streets like I'm circling the dead, slowly at first, the starlight reflected in sleeping mouths. When I woke up this morning, I was in love. They say love is a sign on the door urging turn back. They say the dead are the victims of love. All right, I'm just gonna break it up with lots of sexual poems so I don't lose you all in my death poems. <laughs> okay, uh, this one's called A Young Freud on a Long Train Journey Remembers His Mother Undressing. Uh, so, thank you. Uh, sitting snug in this train car, Leipzig to Vienna, pondering Goethe's skull in the Lido, hoping for enlightenment, I picture a bath in reddish water, a chain of memories, the awakening of my libido towards Matram, water in which she had previously washed herself. I see her, Nudam. The woman mother's naked, whole body, lipstick and stockinged, the sharpness of her shoulder blades, the soft curve of her belly in, in the frame of the hotel window, the architecture of those lines as smooth and familiar as my own hands in front of me now, touching the tops of my thighs, holding firm to a pen as I write my dearest Lou. Strange now to have no feeling of shame, for which there should well be occasion. I close my eyes, press them shut against this memory of my mother. And what makes me think of her now, with her one foot propped on the sill, bending to undo the buckle of her heel, sweat brightening the hollow around her collarbone? I want to say something now about the look of your body against my reflection in the glass, slim and beautiful about my hands reaching out, cupped as an offering to you. Say I was there. Say I am here now, sitting alone in my wagon lit compartment as I talk to myself to let the details go, letting the light out. Look up every once in a while. I forget to do that. Um, okay, this next one's called something rejected. How's my time doing? Okay, all right. Six, six minutes. Okay, all right. You're good. Um, so this one's based off a Korean film I watched called Mother. Something rejected. As in Jun Ho's mother, you must loosen the ties, return to a state of isolation, not eros which absorbs or ejects, but does not sever, but rather Thanatos, death-bearing, the in inside mixed with the unstable border of the mother's body. Bellini, having been loved by no mother, painted Madonnas for a lifetime. Madonna, the mother, dreaming of an unsignifiable experience, mother with the child parallel and close, the clean and proper body, that mute border. One kind of son asks his mother to wash his hair in the kitchen sink. Another drinks from the bowl in her hand as he pisses against the wall. There are things you have to say that you can write down in your notebook for now. Little fits of dread, a vomiting of the mother. She presses the bowl to do June's lips, but different this time, not laced with poison. She says, you and I are one, her devouring body, his piss and shit and blood, your leaking borders, Bellini's movement towards color and light, 
that luminous outside. obsessed with mothers, mothers and sons. We all have one. Yeah, one. right. It's, it's weird obsession. Um, but natural, I guess. Okay. Uh, I'm going to skip this one. Okay. Uh, this one is called Sonnet After Alice Notley. Um, and I kind of wrote it in her form. She wrote uh, Descent of Alette, which is in all quotation marks. So um, it works both on the page and, and spoken out loud. Sonnet after Alison Notley. You must be willing to try anything, even what scares you. Like all that occurs in secret. Mugwort tucked in shoes, a string tied to two chicken bones, all things absurd, ritual over. How desire can conflict with morality. The edges of eyelids, of tongues. Our love is an edge, oh love, our teeth picked clean, bright, white, like sage, bundles passed over lungs, all things healing, like my mouth, inviting spirits, swallowing, deep yawning, the border between I and other as most fragile, biting as threat, a red mouth devouring a daughter, the mouth I fill with words, the words I use on you, like raspberry syrup, sweet, an edge to cut through. <coughs> one. Thank you again for listening. Uh, this is called The Mouth of Which You Are. You don't think of those around you when you utter mommy under your breath. I love her. I eat her. I bite her. Something enters your mouth. Your mouth as womb, asshole, ear. The woman whose daughter is dead speaks loudly to you about loss, about forgetting. Realizing the difference between being away and being dead. How you have to be dead to never come back. How she likes that part. Remembers Freud's four-year-old in the footnote. But why won't father be home for supper? Later, in a different city, to a room full of strangers, you insist that your mouth is your best idea on the basis of agreement, silence, even and deliberate tone. On the entrance of language that is separate, unrecorded. You are suddenly aware of distance. Kristeva says, the mother inhabits the mouth, the lungs, the digestive tube of her baby, accompanying her echolalia, leading the way to stories and sentences, a speaking subject. The body doubled up and made sacred. Remember you used to say, ma, 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 three steps down the palate, tap, 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 Remember your wish for a mirror that won't reflect the face of your mother, for two mouths, mother tongue, for a mouth in another room, in a different body. Wow.